What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of what I usually call the Sheehan Show, but for one day only. It's the Jimmy Show, as <laughs> James Gallagher joins me today. James, you're, you're back in Ireland. We were just talking about how cold it is. It must be hitting you to, to come back and hit the cold after being in Thailand for so long. Uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, I've, I've worn tracksuit in about five months. So <laughs> now I'm like Perry so I'm freezing running around my scarves and all. So it is but uh I swear to god you can't beat bo- walking off the plane and hicking a good uh, gulp of fresh air. There's nothing like it. It's good to be back at the same time though. I know you're a big family man and I, I, uh, you know every time we see you at a fight week your you know your mom and your dad are always around and everything it must be great to be back and, and to see them and, yeah. and to see all the family. Ah, it's quality, so it is back in, you know what I mean, into the house again and, and stuff and just being back in Strabane, it's it's good. Do you know what I mean? And the, my parents have always been with me throughout my whole career and stuff and been a massive help to me. So a lot of people don't like that, do you know what I mean? But uh, for me, I, I love coming back. I love spending time with the family and it uh, really motivates me to work hard and push on, you know. I, th- I don't know, I think it's the other way around. I think, like, I don't think a lot of people know that side of you and know kind of how close your family you. And when, you know, we, we've said that before, I think people do like that. And I think, you know, do you, here's a question for you. I was, I was going to ask you later on, but I'll ask you straight up now to run it. Do you feel like the general, you know, the, the, the negative versus positive has turned for you? And it's now way, it feels to me like it's way more positive towards you than, it, than say, it used to be. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, as I said back then, good or bad, I really don't doesn't. I don't care, man. Me, 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 me family's good. They all support me. Me fucking friends support me, and any other supports always appreciated it and all this. But I just don't pay attention to any, any of the negatives. You know what I mean? So it's more so. I always seen the positive, and I always seen a bit of the negative and stuff. But I just don't give a fuck what people say about me. Do you know what I mean? And. Uh, and that's just the way it's always been. And this is why I'm still, because, so I always felt like before people always like, oh, he's trying to be like this, or he's trying to be like that there. And it's going like, I'm fucking 15 years deep <laughs> doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it's bound to like stop sometime. I'm about to get a little bit of credit, you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't be just... Sub or can't be like consciously doing something for fifteen years. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So uh now nah, man, I just roll with it and uh, whatever comes I embrace it and uh and just keep shining. Have you have you kind of looked at the Ian Gary stuff that's been going on over the last while and kind of thought like you know, that, that, that was me a while back. You know, people were talking about me and I was the new kid coming up and I was doing Man. this wrong. And I, what, what have you thought about me? about me like that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what have you thought about all of that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't know, man. I just let people have do their own thing and, uh, do you know what I mean? Every, every, and opinions like an arsehole, everyone has one. Do you know what I mean? So uh, as I say, is I, I don't give a fuck about what the negative things people said about me, and I certainly don't give one fuck what they say about Ian Gary. <laughs> have, you, have you felt a bit of sympathy for him, though? Like the way that it's all kind of, you know, everyone's talking about him, and everyone is, you know, nitpicking every little bit of t- thing like they used to do with you. Not really, man. To be honest, that's the game, and uh, you got to be ruthless. Do you know what I mean? People are ruthless. I don't like bitching and complaining about it. Do you know what I mean? It just brings it on more. So you just got to be a be a man, man up to it and uh, face it head on and uh, soldier on. Do you know what I mean? People are always going to pick up stuff and people are always going to have problems. But at the end of the day, what, what kind of shows what kind of person you are, isn't it? And so if you're as ruthless as, 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 as you be, do you know what I mean? You, you'll, you'll shine out. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it handles it. Yeah, that's right. And that's why I think it's turned for you as well, because you have dealt with it extremely well all, all, along the yeah. way, you know, so... That's, that's all you can do, do you know what I mean? Handle yeah. it head on and face on and don't pitch yourself in bullshit situations, don't say stupid shit and don't do dumb shit and things happen as less, do you know what I mean? But if you just carry on being you, doing you, then then what 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 what, what can you else can you do? Do you know what I mean? And that's the way I've always been. It's like, I carry on doing me all the time and and never change no matter what anyone's opinion is and uh after a while people kind of see that do you know what i mean kind of get tired of it like well it's that's just him <laughs> do you know what i mean and uh it'll be interesting if we can say the same thing about ian It'll be interesting to see. and i know i i think we're all we're all pulling from and, look, and looking forward to 
back to you though. The Jeremy Kennedy fight obviously was supposed to be the one for uh, Belfast. That isn't happening, so it's the Andrew Higo. How you know? I, I I was looking at it from your side. You're going to featherweight, obviously, and you you had one there uh, in your last fight. And as you said, you're bypassing the whole division to take on Jeremy Kennedy to go to the top. <laughs> It felt like there was no hesitation from you at all to take that fight. It's a very, very tough fight, but was that your thinking? It's like, I'm just going to go to the top and bypass everyone here. Yeah, man, I've said it from day one. Do you know what I mean? The goal is to fight for a world title, and I want to fight the best. And it wasn't, it was like, I was like, when's the when's the Belfast card? Obviously, I'm getting on the Belfast card. I was like, who am I fighting? That was it. Do you know what I mean? They're Jeremy Kennedy. Okay. Leandro Higo. Okay anyone i don't care do you know what i mean i'm just man i'm just so uh, i'm just so like deep into the game now again do you know what i mean like i've got lost no distractions going on do you know what i mean obviously i had a lot of injuries a lot of personal life stuff going on and, and now i've got none of that do you know what i mean for the last seven months i've just been my head's been buried in the gym and uh since my last fight and i've had no issues no injuries nothing going on except training every day it's what i live and breathe you know what i mean i feel like i'm back to myself and uh i'm ready for whatever they put in my way now do you know what i mean so it's it's never a problem when you obviously you're over in america and you talked about personal issues but issues obviously with the gym as well with james cross's gym and, and you've talked about that before but how, like how tough was it to get through those issues? Like how, m- m- not just mentally, but physically and all that. It must have been so tough. Man, it was the hardest thing ever. But at the end of the day, it's it is what it is. You got to get up. But there's not the game with for nobody. Do you know what I mean? So things have to be parked. Things have to be dealt with, and you just got to keep going. And that's what makes champions. Do you know what I mean? And that's the it's the kilos that make or break. And it's like well. It shouldn't be that kind of a thought, do you know what I mean? You should be in the game and nothing else should be going on. You shouldn't be in situations like this. It should, do you know what I mean? So you just got to stay solid and uh, keep your head buried in the gym and keep your head buried in the game and don't let nothing take you away from it and keep that positivity and keep that belief in yourself and just keep working towards what you want and keep working towards them dreams that I've had since I've been a young boy. Is like... Would you say all the problems are cleared up? Everything is good, and now you're on on the trajectory. Is it something you have to kind of work with day by day? Nah, man, I'm good. I'm fucking. Do you know what I mean? I got nothing going on. Just my only thing I got to worry about is training. Do you know what I mean? Which I love. Do you know what I mean? That's what I've been doing since I've been young. That's what I left school for to go and pursue my dream. And I feel like a, I feel like that kid again. We'll get back to Higo in a second, but the training. Like, I remember we spoke before, uh, I don't know it was before the last fight or the fight before, and you spoke about, f- first of all, having trained with, with James Krause in that gym and then trained more in America and now over uh, in Bangtown in Thailand as well. And we spoke about the striking, and you talked about how your striking had come along. And that was probably, you said, it might have been two years ago at this stage. How far along do you think your striking has come now? And obviously your whole mixed martial arts game, but your striking uh, in general, how, how are you feeling about that now? Yeah, man, I feel great. Uh, I feel great everywhere. I've been, uh, I've got coaches, uh, Frank and George Hickman, and then you've got uh, Connor McBride and like Brad Riddell and all the striking aspects, man. So I've, I've got the whole game covered. Do you know what I mean? So I've got absolutely no worries, no issues anywhere, anywhere with anyone. Is it diff- difficult to become? comfortable in all areas because we looked at you from you know i've been watching you since you were probably 16 17 years of age and who, who was your man you fought a cage where wood he was like 42 matt, or so wasn't he matt no nah, no nah, matt mullen matt mullen yeah that one and like yeah, 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 you yeah look- he was like four <laughs> weeks after the <laughs> yeah, yeah but you looked like you you, you show that fight to anyone you look on the ground you look so comfortable and like has it taken time to find that comfortability on the feet as well and you feel like you're there now yeah, absolutely. I felt kind of been felt like, do you know what I mean? Watch me, watch me against Patchy Mix. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I look comfortable enough mm-hmm. against that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get touched, do you know what I mean? Against one of the best bantamweights in the world. It didn't touch me on the feet. Do you know what I mean? So uh, defeat, defeat's not a problem. I wanted to ask you about that Patchy Mix fight because, like, you know, as you said, like, you've been doing it 15 years now. Eventually people are going to have to realize you're, you're good at it. But, like, if you look at that Patchy Mix fight, look what he's done since. Like it's impossible to not say you're good. I do a bit of MMA match in there because of the the how close that fight was and how competitive that fight was. You must look back at yeah. that and, and it must give you like 
you know, extra yeah, comfort. That was, that was a fucking great fight, wasn't it? I, I, I've been, I watched that back about a few weeks ago, actually. But just as a fan, do you know what I mean? It's the one that was like, ah, the bastard caught me. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, uh, but just watching it, man, that was an unbelievable fight. Like that that's one of the highest level fights from the grappling exchanges to the exchanges on the feet. The how he did catch me, it was it was unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? It was a high, high level fight, but as I said at the start of the interview, man, I'm not in this to get praise from anybody. I don't go off praise. I'm in here to win fights, become the best martial artist I can be, fucking make bank and win world titles. Do you know what I mean? So I really don't give a fuck what people think I'm good or not. As long as I'm taking them boxes for myself, I'm good, mate. <laughs> I'm fucking good. What? And it's not too, it's like, that's kind of the first fight where I'd look back as like a fan of the sport and be like, wow, that, that was a good one. Do you know what I mean? That was a, <laughs> that was a good fight. you know what I mean? And, uh, and, uh, or whatever, but it fucking eats me alive that I, that I got caught. But, Fuck it, that's why I'm in the, it's this game. Is to fix these mistakes, to put myself in situations like that so that I can become the better version of myself. The, the, also, I remember the day before that, there was like little bits of rumours that the fight wasn't going to happen because he missed the, the way. Was off. Yeah. The fight, the fight was off for hours. That was the maddest. That was like the maddest situation. The fight was off. It was on. It was on. It was, it was fucking back and forward for hours so I just went I kind of went off the rails for a bit and was like eating what I shouldn't have been eating and stuff but then the day it happened the way it happened and the fight played out the way it played and, uh, and that's just the way these things are there's no excuses or none of this and a lot of people know about him missing weight you know so well it's like yeah he missed weight but then we agreed to fight it a different way so technically he didn't because I agreed to fight him at that weight <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah oh, do you guys get- people like, do you get paid a little people, bit more to fight at that better, bigger way? Yeah, yeah, but nice. it's <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I got compensated for it, <laughs> but uh, and I didn't just get the twenty percent of his. Price. Nice. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> but uh, the way the way everyone's like, oh, but he, if he hadn't missed weight, and it's like, yeah, but he missed weight on the first agreement, and then we made a new agreement, and then we fought. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there is no excuses. No excuses that. I feel like I'm a better fighter and I feel like I can beat him but yeah. the better man went on the night and like I talked to you about 30 seconds after he missed the weight as well and you were like this fight's gonna happen like, <laughs> so like it's a, it's not <laughs> it's not as if that's a conjecture or anything like that that's that's a fact what about the weight the weight classes though obviously you know you've moved up to 145 now is there still a bit of unfinished business at 135 or do you think it, the future is 145 for you mate I'm walking around 78 kilo <laughs> do you know what I mean it's just it's just hard. It's like I, I don't I don't train. Do you know what I mean? I just starve myself for weeks and weeks and weeks. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking thirty odd pounds to lose, and it's just it's not it's not feasible. It's not doable. It is doable, but it's just not worth it. Compensating the injuries, compensating my performance, and whatever. Now if they pit fucking. Big, big, big money on the line to go and face Patchy for the belt again. Then best, better bollocks that I'm going to 135. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's definitely not in my interest. Obviously, PFL have a 145 division, and you know where there's still, I suppose, a little bit of uh, a little bit of conjecture between what divisions will be in Bellator and PFL and all of that. Is is there something in your future for PFL as well? Would you like to enter that tournament in future? Would you like to? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I want to fight. Fight Higo. That's the just the thing that's my focus. And then after that, I'm gonna get a title shot. So that's where my focus is at. Do you know what I mean? And whatever comes my way, then after that, then I'll welcome it. Do you know what I mean? But uh, it's definitely in the sights. But it's not my focus. My focus is solely on Higo now, mm-hmm. and uh, going and getting the job done next week or in two weeks now. Do you think it's more feasible though now that you, you know you wouldn't have to cut that weight that you could fight more regularly? I know that's been a frustration for you. I know injuries and other stuff as well, but is the, surely not cutting weight will help that too. Mate, just see, like over the since my last fight, I've been straight back into training. I haven't had one injury. I haven't had to take. I got I got sick once for a while that I had to get some sorted, but like I was fine in a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? So other than just an illness, 
I've had absolutely no problems in training. I feel like a proper athlete to be able to do strength conditioning properly. I'm eating lots of food. I'm like going training, refueling, recovering, feeling like feeling like an athlete. Do you know what I mean? And uh, feeling strong and feeling fit. So I feel like why why not go a few times a year? That's why not go four times this year. That's what I want. So let's talk about Higo. What, what do you think of him as a fighter? Obviously, it's changed over only only a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm sure he was preparing and getting ready for a fight as well. But what what do you think about him, like as a fighter and as a match for yourself? Mm. This fight is supposed to happen a few times, so I know his style. So he's, I believe he's dangerous, but not that good. Is where the fight against Jeremy wasn't dangerous, but he's very good. So he is. And uh, it's just a different approach that you have to take in these kind of challenges. So, man, I've just been, I feel like I've been dealing with people like Higo my whole fucking career. Do you know what I mean? Thai boxer and feet and good jiu jitsu. And uh, I welcome anything he brings. So, it's, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Do you think like you're well more equipped now, obviously training over in Thailand for so long to, to deal with someone on him and defeat is like we know what you can do on the ground? But for he going to feel like the, I suppose the challenge for him is kind of the length and you know the he, he likes to fight a real outside distance and make people cover ground so he can counter him is that the sort of thing you've been I suppose working on and how, how would you think that'll fare against him yeah he's not definitely not going to be counter me I'm way too fast for him on the feet and uh, I think my hands are too clean for him I think we put him on the edge of me jab him get him very frustrated and make him swing and make him miss and then before I know it I'll have him on his back and he'll be and then I'll be on his back on in the jiu-jitsu realm, right? So over the last few years, there's been like a massive downturn in submissions, f- finishing fights, especially at, at a higher level, which obviously you're fighting at now. He has a lot of submission wins. You have a lot of submission wins. Do you like? Do you think going forward that you know uh, big big submissions, big wins is still feasible? I suppose at the at the very top level. Uh, it depends. So it is so like. The way that I grapple and the way that I apply submissions, then yes, it's definitely feasible. But just submissions in general, no, it's it's definitely changing. It's not a, they're just not as feasible no more. There are a lot of people that they're putting a lot of defense and they like anti grappling, so it shuts it down. It shuts down the bottom game, shutting down the hips, shutting down the postures and stuff like that. So it's a bit bit more difficult to get submissions, but. Uh, but, but the way that I apply pressure and the way that I strike on the ground, um, my chokes are definitely feasible and they're going to be next week. Last couple of things for me, Jens. I really appreciate the time. What's it going to be like back and run to that home crowd? Obviously, you know, Straban is not too far away from Belfast and a lot of people will come across to see it. You yeah, know, the, um, I'm sure. I'm sure the national anthem will be gone off, and 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 a few more songs as well. Uh, uh, Talk us through what that's gonna be like. Off the place, I can't fucking wait. <laughs> it's gonna be it's the Jimmy Show, mate. It's the Jimmy Show. We have never, never once have we not blew the roof off the place, and uh, and this one's gonna be no different. And I'm looking forward to be back where I belong. Do you know what I mean? Back in Ireland, this is where I should be fighting. This is where I should be shining, and this is where. I should be making me mark as the next superstar to come out of here. And then the last yeah. thing, June twenty second, they're back in Dublin. Is that is that I the know. next is that the next that you're looking at? Is that where you want to be next? Hundred percent. So it is. Let's fucking go. I'll be on the plane back the week after, and I'll be in the gym again and uh, getting ready to go. And uh, I'm planning going on a run. Do you know what I mean? And I want to do it here in Ireland. Do you know what I mean? Against the best fans in the world and. And I want to come here and put on the shows for my own people. I don't want to fight in other places. Not that I'm set, I would say no to it, but uh, this is where I want to be, and this is where I love to fight. And and people know that when they come to my shows, it's the best, they're the best nights out going. Do you know what I mean? So uh, let's fucking do it. And and let's end it on this. So you beat Higo, you turn around, you fight in Dublin. If that happens, you'll probably be fighting for the title. Against, the belt. against either Patricia or Jeremy, who's it going to be? I think Jeremy. I think Pitbull might have had his day, but I don't count them out. I just can't count. You just can't. You can't count someone like that out. If he pits one on Jeremy's chin, then Jeremy's going to sleep. Do you know what I mean? But uh, I think it's going to be a boring fight, and I think Jeremy's going to win. James, thank you very much for the time. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing the fight next uh, week. Best of luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.